Today, I'm playing through a Pokemon Brilliant Diamond meme lock. A challenge where you have to beat the game without ever switching Pokemon. You can only catch the first Pokemon on each route, you can only use each Pokemon Center once, and you can't buy any healing items, at least until the Elite Four. And each time you team wipes, you have to release one of your party Pokemon. I named my character Brick, because I'm going to be playing this game like a brick wall and how I can't switch Pokemon. And of course, I have to give my rival an appropriate name as well. I chose Turtwig as my starter and gave him a great nickname too. That name of course being Atlas, because he's going to carry us through this challenge on his shoulders. We stocked up on Pokeballs and circled back to the first route to catch our first ally, Bucky the Bidoof. We banked the Sand Gem Poke Center for later, and then Dawn forced us to watch her catch a Bidoof, as if we hadn't just done the exact same thing. And in preparation for our first rival fight, we captured Zeus the Shinx, Poseidon the Magikarp, Hera the Shinx, and Striga the Zubat. I was nervous, because losing momentum here and repeatedly losing to my rival would spell the end of this run. But thankfully, Atlas was able to tank through the whole battle with just a couple of growths. We wandered into the grass and captured Icarus the Starly, and sent Zeus off to the box because despite having the label of God of Thunder, it actually had worse stats than Hera. We caught Sisyphus the Geodude and booted Bucky off the team. We healed up at the Poke Center, caught Rocky IV, and sent him off to the box. We went off to battle our first gym leader, Rourke. I was nervous that his Kranidos might be able to sweep my team, but Atlas crit Okoed and just like that, we had our first gym badge. So far, so good. We captured Hercules the matchup and he pushed Sisyphus out of our party. We arrived safely in Floroma Town without much trouble, received Morningstar the Jirachi and permanently benched it, as it's both a legendary Pokemon and a gift Pokemon, so I want to avoid using them as much as possible. We then encountered a wild Shellos with amazing stats. It had two perfect IVs, the Storm Drain ability, and a modest nature. We named it Medusa and had it replace Poseidon on the team. Oh, and it granted enough XP for Icarus and Hera to both evolve. We healed up our party ahead of our battle with Commander Mars. Her Prugly was able to knock out the newly evolved Icarus, but was no match for Hercules. On Route 205, Atlas defeated a trainer's Piplup and evolved into Grottle. We caught Apollo the Buizel and sent him off to the box. Entered Eterna Forest, paired up with Cheryl, caught Arachne the Silcoon, and made our way out of there with free heals after every battle. Without a need to heal, we headed off to the second gym. We cursed up Atlas against Gardenia's Turtwig, but it wasn't enough to survive her Rosa Raid. And although Icarus was two shot, we were able to push through to victory with Strega's Poison Fangs, even through Paralysis. We raced off to face off against Commander Jupiter, and again, Hercules was the hero our team needed. We healed up and headed onwards. We caught Hades the Ponyta and Penelope the Psyduck. Skipped the Poke Center for now, and bumped into our rival for another battle. He managed to knock out Atlas, but that's all. And with the EXP that we gained, Strigo was able to evolve into Goldbat. I'm not sure how much happiness is needed to get a Crowbat, but I hope that we can get one soon because we've had Striga from a pretty low level. Not wanting to chance it, we healed up after our rival battle. And on our way to Veilstone, we caught Bucky 2, the Bibberol, and Dionysus, the Cricketune. We immediately headed over to the department store and picked up some of the most overpowered TMs possible, including Ice Beam for Medusa. We healed up our team and got ready to face the fighting gym. Hera had been knocked out by one of the Black Belts, but otherwise we were in pretty good shape, or so we thought. We were able to fully curse up with Atlas by using a super potion to keep him healthy, but in the process we were thoroughly blinded by Maylene's Metatite. Atlas had no problem taking out Machoke with a single Razor Leaf, but Lucario outsped with double bulk ups while completely dodging our attacks. Then Lucario managed to dodge, outspeed, and Oko our entire party. This was our first team wipe, and unfortunately it meant it was time to say goodbye to one of our party members. We already have a strong flying type in Icarus, so I made the difficult decision to part ways with Striga. In hindsight, I wonder if this was a mistake, but there's no way to know that now. 
We picked up Bucky 2 as an impromptu backup and hoped that with a full health Icarus, we'd be able to fare better this time. This time, we led with Icarus and it got outsped and one-shot by Lucario again. Hercules survived a drain punch and managed to take out half of Lucario's health and drop his speed with the low sweep. But even with the speed drop, Lucario outsped every member of our team. Can someone spell difficulty spike for me? Bucky 2 left the team almost as quickly as they had joined. We added Dionysus to the party for now. Now, this was getting personal. We went out and caught Ares the Ponyta, and apparently she has great stats. But at the risk of losing her prematurely, we sent her to the box for now. We trained up and got enough XP for Hercules to evolve into Machoke, then quickly traded him to a friend to get me champ. Now this is what a fighting type Pokemon looks like. And with that, we were off to crush Maylene with the power of friendship and incredible violence. Hercules crit oak code Lucario with a single low sweep. Take that, Maylene! You don't have anyone willing to trade with you? You're stuck with him at choke? Huh? Answer me, Maylene! We grabbed our third gym badge and skedaddled out of there. At the Valor Lakefront, we caught Chimera the Giraffarig and sent Dionysus off to the box. Thanks for being our death fodder, and sorry for putting you in that position. It wasn't personal. Down at the beach, Hera got enough XP to become a fully evolved Luxray. And we caught another Shellos. We went off to face the fourth gym and had absolutely no problems. Hera go burr. And with that, Medusa got enough XP to evolve into Gastrodon. This team was really starting to feel powerful. We healed up and had no problem defeating Crasher Wake. Hera and Atlas were knocked out, but even without a full team, we were able to wipe through our rival's team with just Hercules. We got the secret medicine from Cynthia, flew to Silesian Town to use the Poke Center, heal we had banked from earlier, cleared out the Psyduck. Cynthia convinced us to go to Celestic Town using the most blatant, bold face lie of all time, stating that there were rare Pokemon between here and there. We wandered aimlessly through the fog to Celestic Town, and every wild Pokemon we encountered was from a Pokemon family tree we already owned, so we opted not to catch anything at all. But we did get enough XP for Atlas to evolve into Torterra. Oh ho ho! The time for you to truly carry this team has finally come. We banked our heel at Celestic Town and flew back to take on the Ghost-type gym. Hercules made short work of most of the gym with Knock Off, and we were able to evolve Icarus into Staraptor. We didn't have a fully healed up team, but Chimera, Hera, and Atlas, all with their dark type moves, I thought we would be okay. We were not okay. We managed to make it all of the way to Miss Magius, but Medusa, Icarus, and I had flown too close to the sun on this one. This was Team Wipe number three. And I said goodbye to Chimera. I was tempted to add Ares to the team, but I was also nervous we'd have a repeat with Miss Magius like we had with Lucario. So I opted to grab Poseidon the Magic Carp as emergency fodder. Apparently, this wasn't necessary. Hercules used his no guard ability to knock off Drift Blim right out of the sky as if his name was LeBron James. He then went on to knock out Gengar and toughed out an attack from Miss Magius so we wouldn't feel sad, but needed some help from Hera to defeat the witch. <laughs> it's almost poetic actually. Almost. We made our way over to Kanalev City, stocked up on some Pokeballs, banked the Pokemon Center for later, and bumped into our rival yet again. He managed to knock out Medusa with his Roselia, but then Icarus swept the rest of his team. It gave enough XP for Poseidon to evolve into Gyarados. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about that. He's still severely underleveled for the team, but we'll keep him in the party for now. We made our way to Iron Island, caught a gold bat and named it Bruxa 2.0, but opted not to add it to the party. We don't need a second flying type, and it would take far too long for her to evolve into a Crobat. We teamed up with Riley and got in some training with some free heals, banked the Ryolu egg, and made our way over to the Steel type gym, where Medusa managed to sweep through the entire gym. For some reason, Byron repeatedly spammed healing items on his Steelix long enough to waste his own trick room. Like, he literally would have outsped and knocked out Medusa otherwise, but for some reason decided to spend several turns forcing his Steelix to repeatedly activate its sturdy ability. I'm pretty sure this is grounds for his gym leader status to be revoked, but whatever, I just want to get out of here at this point. 
Our rival brought us to Professor Rowan, and he delivered one of the funniest lines of dialogue in the whole playthrough. We easily defeated Commander Saturn and Mars with minimal damage. And needed to double back for the TM strength before heading further north. We caught Morpheus the Ghastly, and then made our way over to the Snowbound Healing Lodge on Route 216 to heal up. And on our way to Snowpoint City, we caught Athena the Metatite, Persephone the Snowbird, and Nyx the Sneasel. All Pokémon being sent to the Pokémon box, unless otherwise stated. And then, in the Ice Gym, in probably the greatest irony of all time, Medusa was frozen solid. Medusa. The Pokémon named after someone with the ability to freeze people solid was, themselves frozen solid. And what's worse is that Medusa survived three consecutive fatal hits so we wouldn't feel sad. Do you have any idea what the odds of that are? There's a 10% chance for a Pokemon to be frozen by Ice Beam, and there's a 25% chance of your Pokemon to survive an attack when it loves you. For Medusa to survive three times in a row is the odds of a quarter times a quarter times a quarter, which is the odds of one out of 64, or just about 1.5%. And the fact that this happened while frozen, that's less than a tenth of a single percent. What are the odds of that? Okay, well, I just told you, but still. We healed up before battling the seventh gym leader. I can never remember her name though. Could someone type that out in the comments below? We faced some adversities, but Poseidon was able to clinch it out for us. We went over to Lake Acuity, but it was too late for us to help. We caught Triton the Gold Duck, but opted to keep Poseidon in our party for now. We circled back to Canalav City to use a much needed heal before heading to Team Galactic HQ to face Cyrus. We easily swept his team and he rewarded us with a Master Ball. This has to be one of the worst villains of all time. We battled Commander Saturn and although he gave us a little bit more of a challenge, he was still not saying much. We freed the Lake Spirit Pokemon and made our way to Mount Coronet. We caught Luna the Clefairy and made our way to Spear Pillar. Our rival teamed up with us to fight commanders Mars and Jupiter. Afterwards, he gave us a much needed heal before we faced off against Cyrus. We didn't have any trouble defeating Cyrus, but his final Pokemon was a Crobat, and yeah, that stings a little. I mean, for a guy that says he takes Pokemon's power and makes them his own, he sure does have a Crobat that loves him a lot. Wonder what that's like. But hey, this guy also gave us his only backup plan, the Master Ball, in case the red chain didn't work. So, I'm not exactly assuming much of this guy. We battled Dialga, and to add salt to the wound, we caught it using a Quick Ball. <laughs> I'm just kidding, could you imagine? Thankfully, we have Master Ball as a backup plan in case that didn't work. Who gave that to us again? I can't remember. Oh well, doesn't matter now. We named Dialga Kronos and sent him off to the Pokemon box in case of some future catastrophic emergency. We flew back to Celestic Town to use our banked Team Heal, we caught Siren 2.0, and we made our way to Sunny Shore City. This gym has everyone's favorite electric types, like Mr. Mime, Kadabra, Bibberl, Steelix, and of course, Metacham. Wow, I never knew those were all electric types. You learn something new every day. And, of course, how could I forget two of the greatest electric types of all time, Octillery and Ambipom. Truly, the world of Pokemon is amazing. We defeated Volkner. On our way to Victory Road, we caught Odysseus the Pelipper and healed up before heading inside to catch Daedalus the Steelix. When we got through to the other side, we only had Hera and Medusa left. We healed up and got ready to enter the Elite Four. But before we could challenge the Elite Four, we were challenged by Pokemon Trainer Dumbass for the last time. <laughs> you didn't think I was ever going to say his name out loud, did you? His Staraptor held on with Focus Sash and then used U-Turn to switch to Infernape, flexing a one-time use held item and his ability to switch Pokemon on us at the same time. Not that it'll affect the outcome of this battle, but Icarus took out Infernape and Heracross, Atlas took out Floatzel and the Weakened Staraptor, and then Hercules took out Snorlax and Roserade. And that was that. We're in the endgame now. And now that we're at the Elite Four, we've stocked up on potions and revives in a way that we haven't been allowed to up until now. 
We've opted to heal up the team in between Elite Four battles, or else it forces us to grind up the levels of our Pokemon so high that they just outspeed and sweep the other teams, and it's not really as fun or interesting for a challenge. We've only lost three Pokemon up to this point, and I'm cautiously nervous about how many we'll lose just trying to get to Cynthia, let alone battle her ourselves. We flew back to Sand Gem to use our banked Pokemon Center from all the way back from the beginning for a quick heal up before entering the Elite Four. Outside of our party Pokemon, we have 24 Pokemon stored up in the bank. I'm fairly confident that we should be able to defeat the Elite Four without that many attempts, but even after our first loss, we'll be at a major disadvantage from losing one of our best Pokemon. First up was Eren, the bug type Elite Four member. I was hoping to try to sweep with Icarus, and they were able to get through Dustox, but got flinched and knocked out by Aaron's Flame Orb Guts Heracross. Poseidon switched in and flinched the Heracross back, ha, take that. Aaron used a full restore, but wasn't able to survive the waterfalls. Beautifly switched in and was knocked out with a single avalanche. Medusa began to chip away at Vespaqueen with Ancient Power, and even through another full restore, we were able to get the KO. Aaron sent out Drapion, and although Medusa wasn't able to survive, Atlas was able to tank through enough hits to kill with Earthquake. One member down, four trainers left to go. We healed up our team and headed on to Bertha, the ground type member. Poseidon was no match for water absorbed Quagsire, and while Atlas was able to easily take out Quagsire, his Razor Leaf was no match for Whiskash's Ice Beam. Hercules swapped in with no guard dynamic punches to deal with Whiskash, Sudowoodo, and Golem. But after getting earthquaked by Hippowdon, he needed Medusa to finish it off with Surf. Two down, three left to go. We healed up again and it was time to face Flint, the fire member. Now, Flint is funny. Not Joe Pesci funny, but like, only has two fire types funny. Dresses like Ronald McDonald type funny. We led with Poseidon, but after a hypnosis, a burn, and a full restore, he wasn't able to make it through Rapidash. Medusa was chipping away at low punny with Earth Power when Flint flipped in Driftblim. Driftblim used Minimize and then Baton Pass to Lopany before switching back to Driftblim again. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not really sure what the point of that is, but it let Medusa get a free knockout on Driftblim. Lopunny got Medusa back with a mirror coat and a quick attack, but was no match for Hercules. But Steelix switched in and knocked her out. Atlas got Steelix with Earthquake and toughed out a Fire Punch from Infernape, which itself survived with 1 HP using its Focus Sash. Infernape used a Mock Punch to finish off Atlas, but was no match for Icarus. Three down, two left to go. And this was still our first attempt, so I was feeling pretty good. I was the most nervous about Bertha, Flint, and Cynthia, so I thought we were going to be in pretty good shape. We healed up and went on to face Lucian, the psychic type trainer. Mr. Mime outsped and threw up a light screen, easily knocking out Medusa. Icarus used Brave Bird and wiped out Mr. Mime before he knew what was happening. But unfortunately, Giraffarig had Thunderbolt and was able to tank a Brave Bird. Poseidon switched in with Crunch for a quick revenge kill, but here came something I never would have expected. Metacham, of all Pokemon, was the one to sweep our team. First, a Thunder Punch to Poseidon, then an Ice Punch to Atlas, followed by high jump kicks against Hera. We were nearly able to get Metacham with Hercules, but after a full restore, and with a major type disadvantage, there was no chance against Zen Headbutt. We had our first team wipe in the Elite Four. It was an impossible decision for who to say goodbye to. I was stuck between a rock and a hard place, a golem and a duraludon. I struggled to decide whether to say goodbye to Poseidon since we already had a water type in Medusa, or Hercules because they weren't a good type matchup against Lucian. Ultimately, the decision came down to speed, typing, and future potential, so I rolled the dice and decided to risk it by saying goodbye to Hercules. They've been with us through almost everything, and I never expected this day to come. But it was time to say goodbye. Rest in peace, Herc. I'm sure we'll see you up on Mount Olympus someday. We added Daedalus to the party, snagged a hard scale, and taught Atlas Woodhammer before trying again. 
Why does an atlas learn wood hammer anyways? Well, we got earthquakes. We'll try not to complain. You know how this goes, right? Icarus uses Brave Bird and Atlas uses Earthquake for Aaron. Aren't bug Pokemon so cool? Then Atlas uses Wood Hammer and Poseidon uses Waterfall for Bertha. Bertha says it isn't over, and of course, it is. This would have been a slam dunk for Flint too. But this time, Drift Blim Baton Passed minimized to Infernape, dropped a full restore, and swept our entire team while dodging half our attacks. <sighs> Sorry, Daedalus, looks like we flew too close to the sun. This time, it was you, and not Icarus, that we said goodbye to. We added Athena to the party, and realized we needed some serious support from items. We got some wise glasses for Medusa, an earth plate for Atlas, mystic water for Poseidon, and a sky plate for Icarus. You know how this goes, part two. Brave Bird, Earthquake, Woodhammer, and Waterfall go burr. Athena evolves into Metacham, and we defeat Ronald McDonald with the power of friendship, and incredible violence. And now we're here to face Lucian, yet again. This time we've led with Icarus's Brave Bird, but it wasn't enough to get through Mr. Mime. And once Reflect was up, we had no chance. We were able to trip him up with Hera as a mixed attacker with Thunderbolt. And then Metacham swept through our entire team. The Medicham vs. Medicham mirror match at the end was the real cherry on top, watching Lucian use a full restore in order to beat a Pokemon more than 20 levels below his. But whatever, I'm not bitter. Sorry Athena, you didn't make the cut. <laughs> this time, we opted for a level 8 Onyx, because by abusing Sturdy and Stealth Rock, we could have a 6th Pokemon on the team that actually delivered some pretty impressive value. Alright, let's do this again. Earthquake go burr, waterfall go burr, and I'll have two McDoubles with extra ketchup, pickles, and onions. We said stealth rocks, and would have knocked out Mr. Mime with Hera if not for Lucian's full restore. Icarus used Brave Bird through Metacham, and oh, this is the furthest we've ever gotten. Brave Bird was enough to get through Drafferig, but not enough to outspeed Alakazam. And then Atlas got the revenge kill with Crunch, and Lucian used another full restore before finally losing Bronzong to Crunch from Poseidon. And with the Elite Four down, all we had left to do was defeat the champion, Cynthia. Healed up our team, and led with Rocky Four. We would have set up Stealth Rocks, but of course we got outsped and flinched by Spiritomb. Atlas took out Spiritomb and got revenge killed by Milotic. We almost got her back with Hera, but Cynthia nulled the attack by switching into Gastrodon. Icarus was able to knock out Gastrodon, but then Milotic swept through the rest of our team by spamming full restores and recovers. <laughs> this feels like such a cheap loss. <laughs> switching Pokemon and spamming heals. The exact conditions we can't do in our regular main lock. Rocky 4, you served us well. You were among some of the best of your predecessors. We added Nyx to the team, and yeah, you know how this goes by now, right? Earthquake, Earthquake, Woodhammer, Bargor, and of course, the power of friendship. We had made our way back to Cynthia for the second time. We used Dragon Dance with Poseidon, and he toughed it out to survive with 1 HP against Spiritomb. I didn't think he was going to survive. But I also wasn't expecting Cynthia to switch in Gastrodon with Storm Drain for an attack boost. Atlas used Wood Hammer on Gastrodon, and Milotic used Ice Beam on Atlas. And now, with Gastrodon out of the way, we were able to defeat Milotic with Hera's Thunderbolts. We were down to 4 on 4, but Roserade knocked out Hera, and with a Sludge Bomb and a Brave Bird, we traded 2 Pokemon, and we were down to 3 on 2, in Cynthia's favor. And remember that one of our two remaining Pokemon is Nyx the Sneasel. We went for Icy Winds to drop Spiritomb's speed, and she was able to outspeed twice for a double speed drop. And then it was just Medusa against Spiritomb, and what I knew would be Lucario and Garchomp in the back. So we did the only thing we could that might possibly get us a victory. We spammed Ancient Power praying for the 10% chance for a stat raise, and would you believe it, but we got it! Plus one to attack, defense, and speed. Cynthia used a full restore, 
and we were able to knock out Spiritomb without getting hit. And Medusa, tanking an Aura Sphere, was able to Oko Lucario with Earth Power, turning this back into a one-on-one. -on -one. We paused for a moment. Medusa has Ice Beam, but Garchomp has Sword Stance. If we go for a heal here, and Garchomp goes for a Sword Stance, it's game over, because Garchomp outspeeds us every time. If we go for an Ice Beam, and Garchomp goes for any attack, it's also game over. But I bet that in this scenario, Cynthia goes for the kill. So we went for the defensive play, and used a healing item in battle. That's allowed, but we've been trying to save it only for emergencies. Medusa goes for the Ice Beam, but since Garchomp outspeeds, has a Yachi Berry to weaken ice attacks, and since Earthquake deals 40% damage, there's no way we could beat Cynthia here without using another heal. Unless Ice Beam got the 10% chance to freeze for the first time in this entire playthrough. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Okay, I know the odds. We needed the 10% chance for stat boosts from Ancient Power, and we needed the 10% chance to freeze from Ice Beam. There was only a 1% chance win condition here, and man, it feels like poetry for Medusa to get the mythic freeze against all odds against this monstrous dragon. <laughs> against all odds, Medusa freezes the opponents in their tracks. <laughs> Talk about plot armor. And just like that, 19 hours later, and with 7 total casualties, we beat the Elite Four, completed our Mean Lock Challenge, and became the Pokemon League Champion. Whew, what an experience. And with all that said, done, recorded, and edited, I can't wait to do this again with another Pokemon game. Thank you so much for watching through the entirety of this video. And if you liked it, which it seems you have, please like, comment, and subscribe. Less than 1% of the people who view my videos are subscribed, and even fewer people comment on my videos. All of these things add up so quickly and help me out which allow me to create more long-form content like this. If you're able to help out in any way you can, I would highly appreciate it. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope I see you again in the next video. Bye bye for now.